Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about supply management in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. The supply chain functionality is used to manage the materials, information and finances as it moves through the processes from vendors to customers. This includes managing orders, receiving and shipping products, and the internal logistics such as warehouse activities and transfers between locations. Today I would like to walk you through an overview of some of the capabilities in Business Central and show you how you can drive your business processes with the help of this application. The first screen we see of this modern user interface is the Role Center. This includes all the key functionalities needed for a particular role in the company. The Role Center that I'm using for today's demo is the Sales Order Processor homepage. It includes the most important functionalities this user would like to see. At the top of the screen, I can see some of my tasks related to my role. I have access to sales where I can see my customers and create quotes, orders, invoices, and credit memos. I can handle purchases with my vendors and create quotes, orders, invoices, and credit memos. I can deal with inventory and manage my items, item charges, item tracking, assembly orders, and physical inventory. If I scroll down a little bit, I can see activities. In activities, I've got a set of key performance indicators, which help me see the most important business indicators for my company. I can see that there are a couple of sales orders that are open. They haven't been released yet. There's a couple of sales quotes being worked on. There are some orders which are ready to be shipped and some which are partially shipped. Some of the KPI are green. This means that we can very easily see, realize where the values of business indicators are good and where they are starting to go bad. I can set up these visual warnings on containers, which could be green, yellow, red, or neutral. In the role center, I can find some very useful reports for sales orders. I can see orders which are due today as well as delayed orders. I can see sections with my customers and my items which show their current balance. Now let's see how the sales process is organized in Business Central 365. I will start the sales order cycle by opening a sales quote. We will look at, how, we will look at some functionalities and how this is set up in the application. The first thing I'm going to draw your attention to are the green boxes on the right side of the screen and the details below. This section is called Fact Box and it allows me to see more information about the customer and selected item. I can see all documents created or posted for the selected customer and I have the ability to open these documents as well. If I go to my line item, I can select different line types, GL account, item, resource, fixed asset, or item charge. Let's sell some items. I will add two lines in my sales quote with items 1900-S, which I will purchase later on, and 1965-W, which I will assemble later on. I will fill in the location code, unit of measure, and quantity. The system fills in the unit price and I can add a discount to this as well. In the fact box on the right side of the screen, I can see some information about the selected item. I can see item availability, substitutions, sales prices and sales discounts. I can see scheduled purchase orders, per production orders or transfers for this item. In the next sections, I can find some information about billing and shipping addresses for this customer, and I can use multiple locations for shipping. Let's talk about one very nice functionality in inventory. I can add quantity to assemble, so I have the ability to set up items which have bill of materials, and I can create assembly orders for these items. This type of order is like a kit. I can make this kit to stock or to order, I can select multiple items and add them to my document. When I'm ready with the document, 
I can print it or send it by email. When the customer accepts my quote, I can directly create a sales order. Next, I'm going to sales orders. What you see here is that the sales order functionality looks exactly the same as a sales quote. If I know how to deal with sales quotes, I can easily handle sales orders and sales invoices. From the sales order, I can create purchase documents and directly order items from my vendor. Now let's take a look at the item list. Here we see the item list and now we can open up an item card. I can set up user-defined item numbers or the system can create items with a default number series. Here I have the description and the long description for my item. I can group my items by item categories and product groups. I can set up different unit of measures, substitutions and cross-reference the numbers of my items by vendor or customer. I have the ability to attach different attributes to my items, such as color, material, style, size, etc. I can also attach pictures. The items can have different costing methods, specific, standard, average, FIFO, and LIFO. In terms of pricing, I have the ability to set up purchase and sales prices and line discount percentages for my items. I can prepare promotional prices customer specific prices and set up discount groups. Now let's take a detailed look at the assembly orders functionality. Business Central includes features to assemble items to support companies that supply products to their customers by combining components in simple processes without the need of a manufacturing functionality. This feature integrates with existing features such as sales, planning, reservations, and warehousing. An assembly item is defined as a sellable item that contains an assembly BOM. Assembly orders are internal orders, just like production orders, that are used to manage the assembly process and to connect the sales requirements with the related warehouse activities. Assembly orders differ from other order types because they involve both output and consumption when posting. The assembly order header behaves similarly to a sales order line, and the assembly order lines behave similarly to consumption journal lines. Assembly items can be set up for two different assembly processes, assemble to stock and assemble to order. You typically use assemble to stock for items that you want to assemble ahead of sales, such as preparing for a kit campaign and to keep items in stock until they are ordered. These items are usually standard items such as packaged kits that you do not offer customization for upon customer requests. You typically use assemble to order for items that you do not want to stock because you expect to customize them to customer requests or because you want to minimize the inventory carrying cost by supplying them just in time. Let's create one assembly order for item which is assembled to stock. From the navigation pane, I'm going into inventory and assembly orders. I click new and the system creates a blank document. In the item number field, I will select the assembly item that I want to process. I am selecting item 1965-W. In the quantity field, I am entering how many units of the item I want to assemble. The assembly order lines are automatically filled with the contents of the assembly BOM and with line quantities according to the assembly order header. In the quantity to assemble field, I am entering how many units of the assembly item that I want to post as output the next time that I post the assembly order. This quantity can be lower than the value in the quantity field to reflect a partial output posting. On assembly order lines of type item or resource, in the quantity to consume field, I can specify how many units I want to post as consumed the next time that I post the assembly order. When I'm ready to partially or fully post, I have to choose the post action.
Let's go quickly now to the purchase module. Here I will open one purchase order. Again, we've got general information, we've got lines and details. What you will see is that the pro purchase process is a mirror of the sales process. If you understand the sales process, then you will know how to deal with the purchase orders. If the users in your organization have multiple roles and are dealing with purchases and sales, they will learn the application very quickly. In the header of the document, I have to select the vendor. In the lines, I can purchase an item, a GL account, fixed asset, or I can post an item charge. The item charge allows me to post freight charges, landed costs, or customs duty. If I have an item on stock and after one month I receive a freight bill, I can post this as an item charge invoice in the application. In this document, the user will allocate the cost to purchase receipt, which is created for my inventory items. In the lines, I will add item 1900-S as well as the location code, quantity, unit of measure, and price. When I'm ready with the order, I can print the document as a PDF and send it to the vendor. When I receive this item, I have to add the vendor invoice number and post this order. With the posting of a purchase order, I can again create two documents, purchase receipt and purchase invoice. Now I'm ready to fulfill my customer's order. In order to do so, I will need to go back to my sales order. In sales order, I have the ability to ship and to invoice. The system is creating two documents, one for warehouse, sales shipments, and the second for the customer, sales invoice. Now I can post the document and the system will create both of these documents. When the sales order is posted and the sales invoice is created, I can print the document or send it to my customer by email. Now let's go to the finance module where we will process the customer payment. In global search, I will type payment journal. The system is opening Payment Journal Batch, where I will add document type, payment document number, and account type customer. Then I have to select my customer. On the right side of the journal, I can find column Applies to Document Number, where I can select Customer Invoice. The system has automatically populated the amount in the journal and the balancing account. Now I am ready to post and the system will close the sales invoice as paid. Some other nice functionalities in the finance module are reminders and finance charge memos. If customers have overdue payments, they receive reminders of their overdue invoices. If they refuse to pay overdue amounts, they can be charged with additional fees and interest. You can create reminders in different languages and with different reminder terms. You can set up different levels of reminder letters with different messages to customers. So let's now create a reminder. From the main menu, Global Search, I'm opening Reminders.
The create reminder action is what you will typically use to create multiple reminders at the same time, while the suggest reminder lines action is an action that you will use to create one reminder. The posting and the document dates are very important here. These dates are used by the system to compare the due dates of invoices. So this will specify whether invoices should be included in reminders or not. Now here we can see, or here you can specify whether to include only overdue amounts or also the open amount. If you want, you can also filter by customer, customer ledger entry, and apply fee per line details. Let me click on OK now. And as you can see here, the system has created a number of reminders. We haven't issued these reminders yet, which means that we can open a reminder and we can start modifying if necessary. So just as a non-posted invoice, you can change anything you want. Here at the top, I can see the header, some information on my customer, and the name and the number and so on. If I scroll down, you can see the reminder lines. You can set up the beginning and ending text of the reminder. When I am ready, I click Issue. The system creates the issued reminder, which can be printed or sent by email. The process for the creation of finance charge memos is the same, and you can use this functionality and post interest in the general ledger. The last topic that we will cover today is the sales reports. You can find them in the, in the role center under actions and reports. The system is proposing some standard reports such as customer top 10 list, customer item, customer order summary, salesperson, sales statistics, etc. Let's take a quick look at the customer top 10 list report. Now let's switch role centers and open the business manager role center. Just switching over to the Business Manager Role Center. In this home page, you'll be able to see different KPI and charts. I can see the sales of this month, overdue sales invoices, and unpaid vendor invoices. I can always drill down and see more information about each of these documents. In this role center, I can find some very useful reports. I can see top five customers by sales revenue, as well as my cash cycle. I can change the timeframes of these reports for instant user access to information across reporting periods. In my business manager role, I can see my trial balance and go into some finance figures here. If the amount is in blue, that means that there are hyperlinks, which allows me to click and open my revenue count and drill down and open all the sales transactions of my company. Regarding other modules, the system has a fully integrated finance module, bank module, and fixed assets module. The system has a job module where you can create your project, track project cost, invoice project tasks, and track and record time spent on projects. You can learn more about these modules in our next webinars. Thank you for your attention.